There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my stream yard virtual studio by a guy who is actually a friend of mine that I met literally a year ago, Reed Davis. Reed, what's up, my brother? How are you? Hey, JC. Great to see you, man. Yeah, man. Great to see you too. And uh, we, this has been a long time coming. We've had, uh, both of us have rescheduled on each other for, I don't know, for crazy life experience moments. So I'm grateful to have you here today. So let me give you guys his bio. He is a board certified holistic health practitioner and a certified nutritional therapist. He's the founder of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition and the FDN certification course. With more than 4,000 graduates, he's also a health director for 10 plus years, serving over 10,000 clients slash people, which is amazing. He is an expert in functional lab testing and holistic lifestyle medicine. So he is the perfect person to be on the Jay Campbell podcast. And we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff here uh, today, folks. Uh, him and I were just talking off air and he has actually uh, got his passport or second citizenship from can can Canada. You Are you originally a Canadian citizen before you yeah. came to the States? Yeah, but I'm, I'm American now. I've been in the States a long time, but I <laughs> kept my passport. I've, so, And I might get a third one because I'm really digging Mexico these days. Too. Yeah, man. I, so that's what we were talking about off air. And he knows my story of you know being there and coming back and dealing with what I dealt with in Mexico. So yeah, so this is going to be an awesome show. But let me, you know, as I've been doing recently, and again, for the timestamp, today's the last day of August 2023, which is insane to think that we've already come through 10 months uh, already, or I'm sorry, eight months this year. Um, yeah, crazy. But where just, you know, just this is really an opinion question before we get into the talking points. But like, where are you right now of a mindset about where we're going, you know, as a species? I mean, are you... Are you are you thinking things are going to get better or things are going to get worse? I mean, ultimately, I know we're both positive half glass, half full glass guys. But like, what do you think is going to happen over the next two to three to five years? Hey, geez, you know, I mean, I, I have a tribe. I'm expanding it. We're trying to grow and scale it and get it up. I've trained over 4000 people to do some good in the world. And that's what what I can do, you know, I could double that, triple that. So I, I can do what I can do. And I get up every single day thanking God to be alive and to have a beautiful wife and, and all this stuff, you know, and, and, uh, uh, so I, I can't really, I have to a lot more thought. I know that there are some very discouraging signs and yet I get encouraged every day by the love and the, the beauty of, uh, of our tribe and, and people like you and your followers and listeners, we all want to do some good in the world. We all want to do some good in the world. I would just say, get up every day, be glad you have the opportunity and freaking do it. It's beautiful, man. I'm, I'm obviously a hundred percent agreement. I, you know, I say where you place your consciousness is what you get, right? Like if you want to focus on all the bad, you know, cause obviously there is crazy shit going on in the world. You know, a lot of people look at this right now. If you look at it from like an eschatol eschatological or, scripture you know end times deal that that's what's happening right now but i mean at the end of the day dude you're growing i'm growing people like us who serve others serve creation obviously through wellness through fitness you know through biohacking we're all doing better than we've ever done i mean i spoke to a guy this morning you know on a zoom call from amsterdam and he's putting on this giant uh retreat in in uh the you know the 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 big island i forget what it's called now but it's right off of uh, Thailand. And it's like, now they, they call it the Ibiza of the, of the Pacific. And he's like, man, I hate to say this. It's some choir or whatever. I can't pronounce the word, but, uh, he's like, since 2020, my business has exploded. Like I've grown exponentially. I've scaled my companies. And so the truth is, is like people like us, you know, again, with the attitude that you have of gratitude, 
uh, and being, you know, just excited about being alive and enjoying the, the, the advanced technologies and biomedical hacks and everything that's going on, like we're, we've never been better. So it really does matter where you place your consciousness. So you got it, you know, you, you train 10,000 people, you're scaling your companies, you know, I'm doing the same thing. I sold one of my companies last year and now I have two more. So it's like, it's mm. where you place your consciousness and that's what you ultimately get. So if you're going to place your consciousness in victimhood and you know, keep yourself down here in this red frequency, yeah. you're not going to expand. But if you keep yourself it, in gratitude and happiness, uh, and be excited, then you will expand. It's a beautiful thing, you know, and it never stops. Uh, been that's listening right. to and trying to practice some some good behavior and uh, you know meditation and, and trying to manifest. It's all about manifestation which is where you put your energy, put energy out and you, it, you should get something reciprocal back. But it just uh, two days ago, I was on my way back from Canada, I had a family reunion. It was beautiful. What am I listening to? Wayne Dyer, you know, because exactly. I, I love to listen to positive people who are encouraging. And then, you know, I try to pass that on. And that's all we could do is, is you know, um, keep yourself in good shape and then pass it on. And right. uh, it's contagious. People, We'll want to hang out with you and and um you can be successful it's true i mean your energy and your frequency is contagious and obviously like attracts like let's jump into some of these talk these talking points yeah man uh and again you know me man it's conversational we'll go wherever we'll go with it but you the first one that you have mentioned here is like the most overlooked tool in your biohacking toolbox you know other than the mental emotional uh, the kind of uh, meditation and and just just hacking consciousness would be number one, but number two, that's a little more practical for a lot of people is run the labs. You know, we do saliva testing, urine testing, stool testing. This morning I collected some stool for a freaking test. I just want to make sure, you know, it's a new thing, a new lab I'm working with. I want to check. So what the heck, um, uh, you know, you've got to get some biomarkers. If you're going to biohack, understand what the biomarkers are. There are people selling biohacks, but there's no way to measure or really test it. They, 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 they say, well, how do you feel afterwards? I don't know. I don't feel any damn different on most of them. So it's these measurements. We Again, we collect saliva, urine, blood stool. We look at hormones, the immune system, digestion, detoxification. And it's hard for me to pick one. Which one test? There really isn't one. You could say, well, food sensitivities are important. Run that way. Or what about your hormones? Better get those balanced. What about your digestion and <laughs> these other things? So... So we do hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, nervous system balanced. You know, it's it's really a holistic approach. And uh, I, th I recommend biohacking with labs, not just your things you could go buy, like, um, you know, some pressure chamber or something. <laughs> Come on, Reed. You mean you're not a big, you're not a big, uh, uh, what is it? A uh, cold fusion tank? Oh, I'm all of it. I yeah, listen, I, I spend as much money as anybody on stuff. <laughs> and how much, like behind my screen, why do you think I have the screen here? Because it's hiding all the stuff I spent money on that I don't use anymore. <laughs> I sold, dude, I sold, as you know, I sold all that shit. Literally yeah. on offer up, man, for two straight months. It was literally the greatest scam I mean, I literally, I remember my wife making fun of me, you know, cause I had like a $15,000 massage chair and it was amazing. Oh. And I did use it for a year and a half. I sold it for $2,500 and a little Mexican guy to an Asian woman, a yeah. little Mexican guy that worked for her came in and dude, this thing was 700 pounds. Right. And, 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 and this is after we had closed our house. And so I don't even have insurance in my house. So I'm thinking if this thing rolls over on this guy and he dies, uh, you know, <laughs> ain't my deal. And I wasn't going to help him cause it was so heavy, but he literally, muscled it up on his back and dollied it out. I've never seen anything like it. My wife and I were like watching this. And then all of a sudden there he is. And I'm like, damn, dude, never underestimate the value of brute strength, you know, old man strength as I call it. But, uh, but yeah, man, like I'm that's, totally with you. Like, great. you know, you, yeah. you, there, you know, it's, it's just things and, 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 and no matter what it is, like you have to understand your biomarkers, and so many people don't read. I mean, you know, that's the biggest problem is that you people go through life completely unaware, you know, talk about what you were talking about hormones. I mean, how many people out there today right now in America, and really it's globally, but America is like where we can focus our energy right now. 
don't even know they have a hormone deficiency. I mean, they're walking around in the most contaminated society in the history of mankind, at least in this, you know, era of humans. And it's like, they have no clue, you know, and a lot of these people, they come to me and they're like, they want to use peptides and, you know, they ask me all these questions and stuff like that and send me emails and, you know, all the different messages across social media and stuff. And I'm like, well, what about your hormones? You know, are you working with a hormone deficiency? And they're like, well, what the fuck does that matter? Who cares about that? You know what I'm like? Oh my God. Right. But it's, it's, it, it's awareness. It's like you said, like, and this is what you do, you know, your business is involved in this kind of stuff, but like so many people don't know the first step, which is like, get your fucking labs done. Understand what you're working with. Do you have inflammatory, you know, uh, biomarker indications and, and so many people don't do it, dude. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And the saying is test. Don't guess. Right. Or exactly. don't guess test any way you want to put it. No one owns that expression. But it makes sense to get some markers and know where you're at. Uh, with a lot of things, by the way, I, I moved out to this house. I mean, I'm in a, a basically it's a resort on a lake uh, outside of San Diego. It's it's amazing. And uh, but there's no city water, which is probably a good right. thing. But yeah. I had to, I, so I had to dig a new well. The well was well sucked. I get this new well and I test the water. And it, and it, they tell me it's clean. There's no smell. There's no bacteria. It's it's all good aesthetically and different ways. But your uranium's high, and so I started studying uranium. Was that what's elemental is not the radioactive kind, and actually it doesn't cause any real problems. But what I did for the heck of it is I did a HTMA, a hair tissue. I don't have much sure. hair, but I sure. scraped off enough to get into the lab. Guess what? My hair was high in uranium. Wow. Because, and I don't even drink this, this, this well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, so, uh, but it was just through showering. Yeah, I was going to say showering, yeah. Shower, yeah. just through showering. Yeah. So you, you got to test these things because, it, you know, it could, could be bad for you <laughs> if you don't. So, and there's so many ways you're, again, blood, slab, urine, stool, hair. You could, there's a lot of things you could send into the lab and get really good data on. So everything we do now is data driven. It's data driven. It's, it's how you feel matters, but what the labs say can tell you about future. You can kind of predict where you're going. The big marker now with uh, with Perlmutter's book that came out, Drop Acid, Uric Acid. So yeah. we're adding uric acid to one of our tests that we run on every person uh, because it's such a great biomarker for future problems. Yeah. Independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and dementia and cognitive decline, all these things. So, Hey, you want to measure it and then you can check your behavior. You can tell, you know, you might think, Oh, I don't drink that much sweet stuff or I'm, I'm a low carb guy. So I'm fine. You're not fine. If you don't check, Right, 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 right. Well, what the, you know, you're the guy to ask this, you know, and I always think about this. And honestly, look, again, you know this, and I don't want to rabbit hole, even though we could rabbit hole on this. I mean, read the mm. United States is so fucking contaminated at this point. Like, who's testing the wild caught fish and the grass fed farm, you know, razors for the beef and stuff like that? Because look, man, you know, we didn't say this off air, but I'll tell you, and I've been sharing this with a lot of my friends and influencers and circles and stuff like that, that like living in Mexico, and that's probably one of the reasons you want to be down there. The food is farm to table. There is no chemicals, right? Like everything is cooked and prepared and done right then and there. They don't have glyphosate. They don't have atrazine. You know, so all, all, same thing. There's no spraying in the skies. There's no bullshit. So the food is very clean and very tasty. And I know this now because, bro, I've been back in America. You, you froze up on me, bro. It's from Whole Foods. And, you know, I think our internet just dropped, but that's fine because we did have the hurricane yesterday. So there's still instability in the, hur in the, hur in the uh, internet here in Tampa. Wow. But I told okay. her to stop buying it because it tastes like chemicals. So yeah. it's like, how many people, I say that story because I want to ask you, like, how many people in this country right now are exposed to all of these various things that, you know, again, elementals, heavy metals, mold uric acid i mean i mean how many of people are dealing with issues that they have no idea that they have them oh i think it's 100 percent. i don't know <laughs> I, well listen jay jay do, do you know anyone who's perfectly healthy no in your, in your lifetime so no. yeah i started in the 90s in the health space and i've yet to meet that perfectly healthy person 
They've right. done tests, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and by the way, before I get into the health space, I was in environmental law and conservation. I wow. went to USD. I, I, I studied and um, graduated, and I worked for a company doing uh, conservation, recycling, all kinds of saving the planet, saving the sure, whole sure, planet. Sure, sure, sure. birds, water, trees, bees. And, and then I switched to people. I wondered, what about people? That's that's how I got in the space. But uh, when they went and took air samples and snow samples from the top of Mount Everest, far away as you can get, yeah, they found chemicals. Of course. Yeah, yeah. of course, because it's in the atmosphere. So that means you could go to Alaska or doesn't matter. Yeah. Friends, that live on the, friends that live on the top of mountains. It doesn't matter, man. They did a study of cadavers in uh, that had died in car accidents, young men in their 20s, early 20s, I think. And they had up to 300 different chemicals in their bloodstreams and in their tissues and things like that. They've done studies on baby umbilical cords uh, that, you know, you can donate them and do all these different things. Um, they found hundreds of chemicals in umbilical cord. Uh, and so... The, the answer to your question, 100% of us are exposed. Now, exposure is just one part. Right. You do a lot of things. So there's the idea of detoxification and mitigation. And is there anything you can do? The answer is yes. And that's what we study. That's how we biohack. It's, it's getting the labs to tell you, uh, like that hair tissue mineral analysis. I was looking for a couple of things in particular, but it measures a whole lot more. If you've got mercury and, you know, it, it's endless. And, and let's be honest. I mean, like, you know, the more we modernize and we build these McMansions and put, you know, 5G <laughs> and 6G and yeah. radiate ourselves oh with God, electromagnetic, yeah. dirty electromagnetic frequency. I mean, you probably know what's his name, Justin Franson. <clears throat> you know, he's in Orange County and now he's out there telling everybody that like having an electric car, having a Tesla or a BMW or a Mercedes, because they're all going toward it and sitting in the car while it charges will shorten your lifespan at a minimum of 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, it's so scary. And, you know, I, I want to see some studies. Obviously that's what I do. Matter of fact, every two weeks I do a live uh, show with the guy, Dr. Aaron Gonshore. He's my chief science officer. And we do a, a program called science matters Yeah, every two weeks. And we go over studies. So there's studies written by people much smarter than me. Half yeah. the shit I can't read, you know, right. but I look, I look it up. And and so there's, there's data. So yeah, there is, there is. And we're contaminating the environment and the EPA in the United States pretty much doesn't give a rat's ass because they're controlled by the lobbies, the governmental lobbies. Don't even get me started, but yeah, really? man, like you got to take really? ownership, of your health, you have to take ownership of your health. I mean, it's literally that simple. There's no one out there that's going to do it for you. And yeah, man, like if you don't, you know, like pay attention and, and get tested. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're for sure likely going to suffer an earlier death than someone who is aware and yeah. does know and, yeah. and can take action and be proactive. There's stuff that will sneak up on you and it yeah. sneaks up on you. It's insidious. You can feel fine and die of a heart attack the next day. Right. So that sometimes a heart attack is someone's first symptom. Some, See, I guess he wasn't so healthy, was he? He had a heart attack and didn't make it to the hospital. Yeah. You know, that It could be that bad. Now, that sounds extreme, but it happens every day. Well, medicine and, does that to people, though, too. I mean, one of my inner, inner circle people, the, the wife, uh, was given bad medication. You know, misdiagnosed, given bad medication, literally died, had a blood clot break off. She was actually very healthy, uh, but the medication caused a blood clot and she died. She was not vaxxed. I mean, this just happened literally in the last like two months. And so I've been dealing with this, but it's not funny. yeah, man, like you're right. I mean, here today, gone tomorrow, you know, I mean, but, but it's, it's, it's obviously better to be hyper aware than not to be aware. Or just aware, you know, and so it begins with self-awareness where we started, you know, just the idea that you're not your body, you're not your mind you know right. that you're a spiritual being and things like that and it gives you a little bit of an edge you know as far as you're uh on your path and and uh uh you know you can take care of this damn thing and be vital you know we all want to be vital so yeah i run labs i teach a course in lab work and it's very popular it's easy it's in plain english because that's how i need to understand it yeah. einstein said if you can't explain it to a six-year-old you don't know it well enough right Right. So uh, that's the other thing I 
think of these studies I read. What a bunch of crap, most of it, you know, like big words and stuff. You don't yes. need all that. Yeah. You know, you, no. you can get it down to a level where really they should be teaching it in seventh grade. What I, I do mean, is study, studies are a joke anyway. Let's just be honest. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I write about this. Well, not every book I've written, but in my last three books, in the beginning of the forward, I say, look, don't back up your life on peer review and pub published research because no study ever is even re 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 blah, 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 replicatable. So there's never yeah. been a single study that you can do again and get the same results. Right. So, I mean, again, and we know through quantum physics that, you know, the Heisenberg effect, you know, the observer is creating the reality of what's happening. Right. So it's like, you can't totally rely on studies, not to say that there's not data that's helpful. The other thing about studies, as you know, is that mo majority of them are done in comorbid people. So the yeah. patient population groups are sick. So how are they relevant yeah. to quote unquote healthy aging people, which by the way is also a misnomer because as you said, how many people did today that are aging are actually healthy? <laughs> yeah. You know, you made a really good point there, Jay, because everything we do, my whole system is basically a study of one. Exactly. So you're not a cohort, you're a person and you're an individual and That's we're right. remarkably different from each other. Yes. The, the biochemistry stuff is, is crazy. Um, and and uh, we're we're so different. So you have to do a study of one. Maybe that's a good way to put what we do. We're, we we create studies of one. You, you that's know, right. what's your hormones? What's your immune system doing? What's your? Are you breaking down and absorbing food? You, not a cohort, but you. And so then, what's the right diet for you? You know, what time should you go to bed? <laughs> How much yep. exercise should you do? You know, this idea of stress. And stress reduction is just enormous. And of course, supplementation, we don't have to talk about any of these things, but D-R-E-S-S -S is our protocol. Diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. So yeah. that's after you've got the data. So we look at hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, nervous system. That spells hidden, by the way, H-I-D-D-E-N. Nice. So, so you look for the hidden stressors, dysfunctions, the things going on upstream that are sometimes so far away from the symptoms and you may not even have symptoms. Um, and sometimes you can't even find, you know, everyone looking for the root cause, but you can get close enough to it to have an effect on it. If you, if you can change your behavior a little bit, you know, you're a pretty disciplined guy. Uh, I know you only buy the best tequila, not the cheap stuff that takes <laughs> discipline. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious uh no alcohol in this body but you know did you, you you threw me you threw me for a loop because not for a loop i mean in a good way you started talking about but we're spiritual energy beings and that you know like now i just want to like go deep with that with you on that because whenever i hear somebody say that i'm like oh okay right but it, it's totally true and i don't want to like rabbit hole but you and i can speak about this because the fact that you said that makes me know that we can but like you said, you know, you're not your body and you're not your mind, right? And that's absolutely true. You are a waveform holographic fractal of the source. You are a spiritual energy being having a physical body experience. But it's like when we, when I say that, you get it, I get it. And, mo and thankfully, most of my audience gets it. But like, dude, I keep telling people, like when people ask me now in questions and podcasts, like, you know, what's, what's the main talking point? I'm like, uh, teaching people that if we don't raise our consciousness, we're not going to make it as a species. Right. So it's like, I love the idea that you just said that, you know, even and it was like five minutes ago, but I'm yeah. listening. Okay. And that's so key because like, if we can get people to understand read that we are waveform spiritual energy beings, and we're not just these physical bodies, like people will take, their health from a proactive standpoint much more you know seriously and that and that's the problem is so many people like my wife has a saying and it's so true most people don't value their health until it's gone right and it's like yeah. you know you've just abused your body your whole life you never exercised you've drank copious amounts of alcohol and sugar and whatever and now you're but you focus on your business or whatever it was and now you're worth 20 million 15 million whatever and you got one foot in the grave physiologically and you want to hire you or me or people like us to like get you out. And you're like, dude, you don't, there's no 90, 90 day plan for you. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's hard to talk about with some people. Like you said, I got uh, a buddy, he's a billionaire 
And I just want, you know, have a, you know, and he's always, his business is doing great. And, right. and we talk a lot of business stuff, but I haven't broached that. Really need to ask him, dude, at nighttime when you're laying there, are you thinking about your electric company or are you thinking <laughs> about, you know, uh, where are you in the universe? How do you uh, mingle? How do you, how does your energy mingle with the, the source and, and uh, those kind of things, which is, you know, I, I spend maybe a little more time than some people do it. But not as much as others. And as long as you recognize that yeah. you're not your mind, okay? Your thoughts are just, most of it's garbage. They're just That's thoughts. Right. And they're the from drunk monkey. experience. Drunk monkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, drunk drunk monkeys. Monkey mind, uh, said guru calls it. And um, and then what happens next is you think about something long enough and you get emotional about it. You start getting pissed. You start getting happy or sad or whatever it is. And uh, neither one of them is what you're really all about, you know, but but to, to raise your consciousness is work. It's like anything yeah. else. You got to learn, you know, learn from people who've done it, uh, add it to your add it to your the mix of what you do for yourself. You'll become more conscious. And uh, maybe then some of the other things like eating better, exercise, right. come a little bit easier. If you raise that vibration and awareness, Dude, that's totally true. I mean, I mean it, it, you know, like when my, just to share for a second, when my wife first met me before I became this person that I am now, when I was, mm -hmm. you know, and we're all walking the same path, right? Like nobody's better than any, as I always say, like where you are consciously is just where you are, right? Like you, we, at one point in this lifetime, you were way lower, right? But the, the path is always higher and higher and higher and higher frequency. So it doesn't matter where someone is, but the point is, is that, my wife said to me when she first met me, she was very spiritually advanced and really has been my greatest spiritual mentor. She said to me, you have this amazing physique. She's like, what are you doing for the inner part of you? And I'm like, uh -huh. what the fuck are you talking about? Smart right? lady. <laughs> Back when I was 44 years old and eight years, fast forward eight years later, and that's all I do now is take care of the inner being, right? The, the inner frequency um, of, the of again, this, these waveform holographic spiritual energy beings. And so it's like, Everybody eventually read will get to that path, but you know, yeah. at various rates and speeds. And as I always say, there's no speed better than another. Cause we're all walking back to source. We're all back we're walking back to perfection. But yeah, it is, it is interesting to what you said, because the more you practice it, the more aware you become, it's just like building your physique or testing your biomarkers or building and scaling a business. The more we practice it, the better we become. And it's how many people don't practice. And, and, and you know, what? because you hear from your friends. And, I, and by the way, I have the same type of friends. And by, and by the way, my billionaire friends like to talk to me about this shit because they don't really? understand it. They don't understand it. They literally uh, don't understand it. And they're like, you know, they come to me with all their stresses and all their financial operations, and all the people they pay for. And, you know, that's all they think about all day long. And I'm like, dude, you're only responsible for you. Like you may think you're responsible to your 2000 employees and your mom and, your, you know, all these people that you pay shit for, but you're only responsible for your frequency. Like I always say, you control one thing in this life and that's your vibration. Literally. That's all you have control over is your vibration. And then, of course, the choice that you make to the things that happen around you, you can respond out of love or you can react out of fear. And again, the majority of people react out of fear because they just go, ah, I'm not in control of their emotions. But if yeah. you sit there every day, and it doesn't matter, you know this, there's a million ways that you can sit in stillness or get to a place where you're just not you know, controlled by your thoughts, and you do it repetitiously. And five minutes becomes 10 minutes and 10 minutes becomes 15 and 20. And then all of a sudden you're doing it, for, you know, like I do 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes a day. I did 45 minutes this morning. That's why I'm on a roll right now. Good and I, I literally, dude, I feel like you have access to everything in the, in the, in the cosmos. And that's what you have to explain to people. It's like, if you just do this, instead of stop stressing and worrying and thinking about who you got to pay off. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, just be still, as you know, be still and know God. It's I'm like, with you. yeah, I mean, everything changes in your life and abundance and prosperity becomes your natural state. And, you know, as you know, happiness, people always say, I just want to be happy. And I always say, no, you don't. Happiness is a fleeting moment. 
You want to choose joy because that's a state of being. And you can be in a state of joy for the thought. But just a yeah. mind change, a mindset change, right? And as you said in the very beginning of the show, if you wake up every morning grateful, and I don't want to get cliche and sound retarded, but if you wake uh, up every it, morning it, grateful. Yeah, attitude of gratitude. Uh, just my, everything uh, shifts, dude. Have you talked to one of my students? I think he was at the mastermind we met or at that event. Um, uh, ben Azadi. Yeah, Ben's a very close friend of mine. So Ben, Ben was a student of mine and um, he's gone off and done these amazing things. He calls it vitamin G. Mm -hmm. So I, I give him full credit for that, you know, just, and he's such a happy guy. Ben you know, just texted me person. like an hour and a half ago, by the way. That's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird, Ooh, weirdness. <laughs> no, but there's no, but dude, look, there's no coincidence. There's as you raise in frequency, you realize there are no syn uh, coincidences, only synchronicities because the universe is ebbing and flowing and you're vibing and your vibe attracts your yeah. uh, tribe. And obviously the more you vibe at a gratitude or a, you know, a higher awareness level, again, a, you know, I, I like to just say it's like an, beyond an attitude of gratitude. It's also just an attitude of joy. I'm choosing abundance. I'm choosing joy. That's my state of being. And obviously, you know, it's not, you can't stay in joy. You do have an ego and it does get in the way of things and every time, but if you just focus yeah, on, if you focus on it, an, an in joy, you can, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And an example um, of how it works, if I might. So, um, cause you don't have to believe in God. People say, well, I don't believe in God. As soon as I start talking that way, I don't believe in God. So you're wasting your time. I go, you don't have to, <laughs> you just have to be aware that there is a consciousness, there is an intelligence that created everything, right? And here's how the energy outflow and then inflow works for me. It's, it's an example, just the other day. So I I, uh, I needed a formula for something. I'm, I dreamed up a new supplement, nice, uh, mostly for men, but I know women will be taking it because they love to raise their testosterone. And so I needed a formula. So I called someone I know is a really good formulator. He owns a huge supplement company all that and i left him a voicemail i said dude i, I need a special formula i want to create this thing just for me you know i'm introducing my first product to my i have this huge tribe i've never done supplements before don't have and uh you know what he didn't call me back and he didn't he, i still haven't heard from him but the next day i got a call from someone else who said, hey, I'm a formulator and I, I've got this idea for you. And the, so I connected with this person. So I put out this energy and, and it came right intelligence back. into the thing. It doesn't even have to. Uh, it's not going to be that person to call. It's going to be something else in the universe swirls that around to you. Like you said, you know, I tell my I have some um, some uh, course register. They, they help people register for the course. And they're not pushy. They're not salespeople per se. And I tell them, look, just make phone calls. It doesn't matter who you make them to. Right. You know, because you're putting out there this energy that you're, you're yes. here, you're present, you want to help people. And it will, the phone will ring. And it's not the person calling you back. It's someone else saying, hey, I'm really interested in that if the in course. So the outflow action is what brings it back. And so you've got to get into action and movement. That's how you make the thing work for you. That's exactly right, dude. And most people, especially today, after what fucking happened in the last three years, are afraid. They have the fear of failure, which is really the same thing as the fear of success, stops them from taking action. And that, and bro, you already know this. Like the only thing that separates humans. I mean, I mean, if you if you if you've ever read any of Walter Russell, you know, The Secret of Light, you know, one of the greatest modern philosophers truly probably an archangel in a human body, you know, he, he, he literally would say the only uh, the humans are separated only by will and intention. Nothing more. We're none of us are anything more than literally sparks of the divine mind. Like you said, we're not mine. We're not these bodies, but we're separated by will and intention. So that's it. Like those of us that have the will to take action, get more out of life. And again, I don't like saying the word more because there's no definition of better or less. You know, that's a duality, pol polarized, third dimensional viewpoint. But if you take action, you have an opportunity for greater, uh, you know, 
control or not control, but experiences. And then of course, contribution. That's it's that simple. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. Uh, matter of fact, the book I was listening to the other day was Wayne Dyer's. I think power of intention was the yeah, title. I have that book oh, right now over it, my, it, it's literally yeah. right over here. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's next to me here, but I have it on audible. I love listening to books now. And um, the uh, uh, great golfer, one of the greatest of all time ever, was Arnold Palmer. Everybody knows there's a drink named after Arnie. him. Yeah. He was this amazing golfer. And they, I heard someone ask him once, what, what's the deal? How come you, you don't golf anymore? And what he said, his answer was, I can't will the ball into the hole anymore. I can't will the ball. That's exactly anymore. right. So he had this will. I mean, and that's what these guys, when you're making a 60 foot putt, there, <laughs> it's all will and intention. That's right. You know, that's no right. one's that good a putter. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's totally true. And look, it goes back to the Heisenberg principle. I mean, we control our reality with our thoughts. So if you think positive, abundant things, that's what you get. And most yeah. people read, and this is the biggest problem in the world. Most people focused on focus on what they don't have or the wanting of what they don't have. And so what does that create? More of the same. Again, everything is quantum physics. It's very easily explained. This is not woo woo. If you desire a higher and better life, then think higher and better thoughts, hang out with higher and better people, motivate yourself to reach consciously beyond where you're currently conscious. I mean, that's literally my life story. I mean, I, I, up until I was 44 years old, I was absolutely just this r ruthless, ego, mon ego maniacal maniac. Yeah. And once I started becoming reflective of my thoughts and guarding my thoughts and becoming, you know, more introspective, meditative, contemplative, I mean, dude, you don't have to, that's all woo woo, even that language, right? When you try to explain yeah. it, all you have to do is just go fucking sit in nature with no phone and no Bluetooth headset, <laughs> maybe your dog, and listen to the birds. Bro, I tell people this every day, and this is a truth. You may never have heard this before, but it is a fact you can do it yourself today, and especially where you live. You live in beautiful nature. It's God's country. Go outside when you're stressed or feeling a little bit overwhelmed and listen to the birds sing, and, and I mean actively listen and they will, this is a truth, by the way, this is not woo woo. Anyone can do this. They will literally change the tonality of their audible frequency, how they're singing together to literally lower your stress level. But you have to tune into it to feel it. Now, when I first heard this, you know, a couple of years ago, I was like, that's fucking full blown woo woo. But then I started actually doing it and it's absolutely true. And then again, you, as you know, as you consciously expand, you realize that everything is alive Everything is conscious and everything is sentient. And so if you tap into that frequency, especially nature, you will be connected to the source. You're connected to the everything and no thing of the source consciousness. And that's when you truly expand because now you're connected to the feeling of like everything is connected. hundred percent. Couldn't agree with you more. By the way, I did want to say that in case people think I'm some old gringo duffer, well, you know, golfer dude, I don't <laughs> golf. I just, I can appreciate the skills and talents. Um, the, uh, yeah. So, you know what? Mark Twain said, golf, a good walk ruined. No shit. Mark Twain, Mark Twain, my famous quote, my favorite quote, Mark Twain. It is sad, bro. Like you and I are old enough that like people, the kids, they don't even know who fucking Mark Twain is. One of the yeah. greatest philosophers. Mark Twain said his favorite, my favorite quote from Mark Twain, and he has a billion probably was um, the greatest threat to ignorance is travel. And you know that you cannot be ignorant if you travel around the world, because then you realize that all the bullshit you've been told or led to believe is, is, is made up. You're right. Another observation I just wanted to make for the folks is that you said you used to be kind of an asshole and then you became more self-aware and you, and you, you, you know, you were this, aggressive assertive guy and and that led you on this path to enlightenment you know or seeking just seeking sure. seeking and um but you don't have to have been this aggressive uh go-getter you know super gym dude and all that stuff you could just what if you're really shy 
Yeah. She's a really shy uh, person who's very humble and shy. Also needs the same thing that you found as an aggressive, not shy person. Right. So whether you started off shy, you started off aggressive, you know, then then you everyone needs to find that uh uh s space where you're not your body you're not your emotions you're something else what is it try to just get in the spot where you get little little hints of it and the more you do that the more those hints come and you then you start to be able to use that power uh to do some good in the world it's beautiful and yeah very very good insight i mean all of us you know again i always go back to walter russell he says it's the same path. We're born into the base of the jungle and the path is back to the top of the mountain. And you can, you, you know, you can look at that from like a spiritual standpoint, like we were talking about, we're waveform energy beings and it's the truth too, right? Cause like even raise your vibration, raise your frequency, raise your consciousness. I mean, it's literally going higher than where we are now. And again, as these physical bodies in these matter, you know, you call them the meat suits, whatever you, whatever these are, like we're in low density, a low frequency. And so we choose obviously to come into these frequency bodies. But the bottom line is, is that over time, if we just recognize that everything that we experience is a gift, is a gift, right? And that's another thing we could talk about. Like people label their lives as, you know, mistakes or fiascos or collapses or, you know, people divorces. I mean, you can think of all these things that happened to us and the, the things that transpire to us. If we just label them as learning observations or learning opportunities instead of negative, whatever, which is what most people do. Um, we can look at life through the eyes of like, you know, empathy, empathy and, and realize that everything was a had value to us, but we have to look at it from that perspective and stop, you know, stop, you know, labeling it negatively. And that, and that's what I think a lot of us do. And, and again, we all do it at various points in times in our, in our, in our path. But if you can get to a place, read where you don't label anything that ever happened to you as a negative thing, everything really changes because now you can look at that thing and say, mm, interesting, you know, I want less of that, more of this. But then you also say, Hey, going back to attitude of gratitude, I'm grateful to experience that because that's where I evolved the most. Yeah. It's hard to tell that to someone who might have just lost somebody very close to them or something like that. True. But True. you know, you're still there. You still uh, get to seek joy and um, you know, there's, there's pathways there and they're different for different people, but um, it all comes down to what you call the wavelength, you know, the, the energy, this, what I call it the source of creation. It's yeah. really intelligent getting back to kind of our bodies for a minute and this idea What's our basic philosophy in FDN, functional diagnostic nutrition? What I what I teach, my program, my my tribe, and things like that. FDN, it's about respecting uh, the intelligence in every cell, all your tissues, organs. There's an intelligence that wants to be healthy, and <laughs> you can work with it, the intelligence, or you can work against it. You will pay the piper if you uh, don't recognize it and work against it. Yeah, man. I mean, exactly. I mean, you know, I, I love, I mean, we can talk a little bit about this. I love teaching people the idea that the cell, our cells are, you know, I, I mean, I know you know this term, but basically our entire organ systems and biological systems are bioluminescent electrical fields. That's literally what we are, right? So it's like when you understand that we are nothing more than light, biophotonic, plasmatic discharge or charges, you know, and I always say like, you know, hopefully you're not, you're vibrating, you're, you're oscillating, right? You're, you're, you're centrifugal, you're torsion based. But like in reality, if we understand that is simplistic, which is what you guys teach, obviously at your school and through your, your uh, certification program, Dude, it's so much easier to understand like why it's important to live healthy, why it's important to live and make conscious choices. What, you know, why it's not not in your best interest to go to McDonald's three times a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you kept saying uh, McMansion. I guess I have one, but I don't call it that <laughs> because it's kind of disgusting if <laughs> you think about it. Yeah, so uh, oh, uh man. that's my favorite word, by the way. Yeah, I bought another McMansion. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. So um, it puts it puts it in another light, doesn't it? That it's hey, it's just another thing. 
just another thing. Exactly, dude. Everything yeah. and no thing. Whenever I write, that's funny you say that. Whenever I write everything or no thing now, I literally write it every and no small and I capitalize thing. Because you're right. They don't even exist. It, I mean, I'm, we're going off the the rabbit. We're deep and down the rabbit hole right now. But yeah, I mean, matter things are consciously consented to. Like all of us as a collective species have consented to have me, this, this computer and me and you at the end of this light, you know, diode of energy to have this conversation. I think, I think you're answer, you're starting to answer the question you asked me, where do you think it's all going in three to five years? I, in three to five years, I'll still be around. I'm going to be um, hanging out with my wife and uh, my kid and me too. Uh, you know, family and things like that and doing some good in the world, uh, keep, keep working hard. And if enough of that vibration gets out to enough of the people, like I'm fascinated now, we, we've been doing some advertising and uh, learning a lot about Google ads and Facebook ads and all, you know, ad spend, ad spend, um, and then return on ad spend. You know, see, so there's all these Roll dynamics. Ad, to it. Yeah, 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 Rojas, right? But uh, as you try to get that down, what I'm like, that's where my crew, my staff does that. I hired people to do that, that know yeah. more than me. They talk that jargon and it doesn't even uh, interest me that much, except for I'm seeing people from Bulgaria and Czech Republic awesome, and man. Sweden and Belgium and South Africa and they're like all over the world, Australia, all over Canada, of course. Um, not to mention the United States, where most of our students are coming from, but and where the labs, you know, are more readily available. But it's the energy is getting out there, and so if I can communicate to someone in Czech Republic or Bulgaria about and on the same wavelength, that's what's going to save the planet. So I think some of the technology, um, you know, I I was a guy that. I made my first million with a pager and a fax machine. That's awesome. You know, so it, I don't need the internet if I didn't now need the internet because right, I see right. the value. You know, I was a BlackBerry guy. I, was, I didn't want to give up Dude, my BlackBerry. Man. By the way, have you seen that movie about BlackBerry? Did you watch that movie? No, I didn't. And it's just, oh, you should watch it. It's absolutely profound. It's on, uh, you know, I think it's it's not a Netflix movie, but I, I mean, you can just pick it up on Apple TV or whatever right now, but it came out like four months ago. Dude, I was a BlackBerry guy too. It is amazing. You will literally, guys like us will laugh our asses off because it's like the story of BlackBerry and what really happened. I mean, you know, yeah. it was, you remember yeah. Research in Motion, RIM. You know, it was, yeah. it, it's an insane story. I know I just rabbit hold on you, but you should watch it because it's a really, I got, really I got, amazing I got movie. It. Uh, Yeah, BlackBerry. So I'm going to write it down. So, um, and you, my wife and I, uh, we, we like to chill out and watch some things sometimes at night. Yeah, me too. We're, Same we're, thing. I, I, yeah. I have, I, I have a TV, a, a, a giant plasma or whatever it is now. I think they're LEDs, yeah. whatever they are, fucking a flat screen TV in my wall, literally that I watch once or twice a month. And it's yeah. literally with my once daughter to watch an educational thing. Uh, or a movie with my wife. Yeah, 100%. But dude, this has been such an amazing podcast. And I know we went a lot of different ways. But it, when I get a chance to speak with people who are conscious, <laughs> I kind of sabotage it and I go different paths. So, so we didn't really talk a lot about FDM. But like, just for you to wrap up your big picture, you know, 20,000 foot view of like, how people can benefit from this. And obviously I'm going to put my, my, um, my link up there and everything. FDN training.com, Jay Campbell. And obviously you guys know in the show notes, when this podcast runs, yeah. uh, there'll be a lot more information that will you know push you down here. But I, you know, I can speak for you and, and, and credit to you. Uh, I also obviously know a lot of people who have gone through your program and have said nothing but amazing things. And obviously the type of person you are has been exhibited in this show, but maybe just give a 20,000 foot, you know, big picture, summary of like why people should reach out and you know because this is the way i look at it right now reed is like there's a lot of people who are looking to change their lives they're looking to change their careers they're disenchanted they're disoriented where they are right now and they're looking to help they're looking to serve they're looking to obviously heal people or help heal people and you guys offer that people want to they search for meaning and i discovered back in the turn of the century that helping other people like really on a face-to-face one-to-one basis, you can work with groups and all that stuff. But I mean, if you want to help people, you also need to make a good living so that you can keep doing it. You know, if it's nice to help people, if you just want to make it a hobby, 
that you know what I learned, uh, Jay, you like this hobbies cost you money. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. Make, my hobbies are gardening. I spent a, I've planted over 2,000 succulents. Some That's of them awesome, cost me man. four or five hundred bucks a piece, you know, for some of these plants. So I have this big property. I'm a gardener, I'm a landscaper. I have a, my own tractor, you know, and things like that. But so those are hobbies that cost you money. So helping others could be a hobby, but I would invite people to make it your profession. Now, a profession means that you make money doing it so that you can perpetuate the whole, the whole thing. You can help more people and more, the more successful you are, the more people you can help. So I kind of dialed it in over 20 years ago, just how to make money helping people. And it's through the labs. You're learning the labs and to interpret them as a non-physician. It's, it's just reality. You're, you're finding out what's really wrong with the person. You know, to hell with diagnosing and treating and all that medical stuff. You know, that's good when it's needed. And God bless you, go see a doctor if you have to. But, but you know... <laughs> You know, if you if you want to take control, which is some of your great words from today, you want to be in control yourself, which you need to be. Uh, then you want to learn how to look at the data, how to get the data, look at the right. data, and use it to modify what you're doing for yourself: diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation, and things. Should all your lifestyle could be guided by this data. So I teach people to do it. Almost everyone who comes to us is some kind of a health practitioner already whether they're you know a health coach or a chiropractor or whatever or they want to be one right and so what we created was a program that you just you're, you're going into business to help people and uh by running the labs and giving them cool stuff to do that will turn their health around it works and we didn't get to uh don't have time really for any great examples and stories but early on i had freaking miracles occurred just just like i didn't know what i was doing you know jay what i say is i had a lot to learn when i changed sure. careers from the environmental law to uh health i had a lot to learn but i had nothing to unlearn exactly you know, i hadn't been to medical school thank god <laughs> you hadn't been right you know i didn't have a, a distorted view of diagnose treat diagnose treat diagnose treat and another thing that i was going to jump in on i didn't want to interrupt you at the time but that medical care is like the third leading cause of death. It's actually the second. It's number two now. It's two now. I'm not surprised. And one day it's going to be number one. Like like faulty medical care will be the number one killer. That's right. Country. So what? So that's fine. By the way, that's why you need a license to do it because it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the control structure. Let's. We won't get into them, but the control yeah. structure does not. They don't have our best interests at heart, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they, I think doctors want to help people, but they just have a way of doing it where if it's not some emergent, a really rough medical condition, they really can't help you much. That's yeah. why, but that creates opportunity. For of us. course. And I'm so not talking good. about docs. I'm talking about their bosses and their controllers. You know what I'm saying? Like whoever, yeah. quote unquote, they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, let's have another podcast and talk about who they are. No shit, dude. You know, don't ask me because fuck, I'll bring you back tomorrow. I'll be like, no. let's talk about hey, them. Tomorrow I'm going fishing. <laughs> but, but but next week, yeah. I'm dude, if you're time. serious, you know I will bring you on part two yeah. and we will talk about them because actually very few people have the balls to actually talk about them. But uh bro, I love you, man. I'm so grateful that you came on here today. So guys and gals, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh Support Reed. I mean, again, if you are a chiropractor, a wellness coach, a personal trainer, somebody out there who truly desires to heal and to help and to serve, I mean, his company, again, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, um, is tip of the spear. You know, I've known this guy now for more than a year, uh, solid. Uh, we have a lot in common. He's trained a lot of people that are very close personal friends of mine. Shout out to Ben Azadi. Um, and obviously, bro, I mean, your, your, your consciousness shines, you know, who you are as a being shines. And I'm just grateful that we had this amazing conversation today. So the great you, interview. Get, I appreciate you, it. you get the final words, man. You get the final words. Mm, love you, man. And, and, uh, I am just kind of still learning, oh, like get up every day, be thankful and do some good and, uh, don't worry about the small stuff and it's all fucking small stuff. Everything, bro. 
everything. God, I love you too, man. I mean, what an amazing podcast. Um, I'm just grateful that we had this exchange of energy. So again, ladies and gentlemen, again, support the amazing people, uh, support Reed. If you're, again, if you're looking to change your life, you know, make a bigger impact, functional diagnostic nutrition.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Thank you.